Everyone, my name is Marie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I'm building a quite large family home in the world of Solani because honestly, that is where I want to go right now. I want to go to Solani. I want warmer, sunny weather. I want to swim in the ocean. Like oh, that is just a wish. I just, I really want to do that right now. However, I can't because Solani is not a real place. Um, <laughs> definitely not a place that I can actually go to. So I'm living vicariously through this game and I'm creating this family home in Solani and I'm really, really happy with how it came together. Um, it is a rental. However, I put it on the gallery as a residential, I believe, but you could easily just use it as a residential lot as like a larger generations family home. It really, really works for that as well. But I just thought it would be fun to actually build a little rental because it's been a while since I've done that. Um, and I have done my fair share of generations family homes and just regular family homes in the past few weeks. So I was like, you know what, let's let's make a little rental out of it, which was nice because this house is quite large and um, it's, it's just not as cluttered as I would usually make my regular family homes because it is a rental. So that was nice. It saved me a little bit of time. Um, and it was just nice to decorate in a little bit of a less cluttery way for a change for this build. So that was really nice. It definitely looks very lived in still, but it's just that um, the bedrooms, for example, aren't as personalized as I would usually make them. So yeah, they are a little bit more generic, not as cluttered, not as much, like not as many items in them just in general. So yeah, I feel like that saved me a little bit of time and it was a nice change of pace to so just focus on like making it cutesy and a little bit more matchy matchy like color scheme wise as well so it was nice to just focus on different things for that um but yeah i i'm really happy with how the shape of this house came together i was at first like for the first couple minutes i was working off of a reference picture that i found on pinterest of a house that i really really liked um, however, I let go of that picture quite fast because, I don't know, it just wasn't really serving me and I was really enjoying just coming up with my own little house, just playing around with the shape and stuff like that. So yeah, I let go of the inspiration pick quite easily, like quite fast, but um, I don't know, I just really like how the shape of this house came together. I was just fiddling around with it a little bit. Um, it was definitely some trial and error, but I was really enjoying that for this little process. And uh, yeah, I was just very inspired to build this. It's definitely something a little bit more, I want to say on the modern side of things, it definitely is um, more so on the interior, but I don't know, like on the exterior as well. You can see that it's, I'm trying to go for a more traditional style. However, you can see that it's um, very recently built, if that makes sense. So that is what I'm really enjoying. And one thing I'm also very much enjoying about this house is the wallpaper. I'm using the new wallpaper from the uh, My Wedding Stories pack. It's like this, like, I don't know what to call it, like a plaster, like a plastery wallpaper. And I'm using it in this very soft gray swatch that I just think is so pretty. And that is definitely um, something I copied quote unquote copied off of the reference photo that I found because that house was like all in that same soft gray plaster sort of thing, like as far as I could see like on the photo, but it was just a very soft gray, pretty color. And that really sold me on using this wallpaper. It's just so pretty. I love this new wallpaper. It's also a little bit like sun stained, if you will. However, you can't really see that because this color that I'm using is so light, but on, on the more like colorful swatches, you can definitely tell that it's a little bit sun stained and I really, really like that. But yeah, you can see this house come together. It's, uh, I use a lot of base game windows for it, which is nice. Those windows are definitely more on the traditional side of things, but still, I feel like I managed to find a balance between traditional and modern for this house that I'm just really enjoying for some reason. And uh, also I built this house in one sitting, which is really crazy. I don't think I've ever built a house this size in one sitting. I've talked about this before, but I'm a very slow builder. I'm quite indecisive and I don't know, I just 
take things quite slow when I'm building because I also really want to enjoy it. You know, I don't want to be in a rush, which honestly, sometimes I feel like I am because I'm also as much as I'm enjoying building, I'm also trying to create content and like planning ahead for like when to upload and like, I don't know, pre-recording sometimes because I know I'm going to be very busy the week ahead. You know, it's just I'm building and I'm enjoying it, but I'm also creating content. So sometimes that can like make me feel a little bit, not necessarily stressed, but it makes me feel a little bit rushed. Maybe like I have to get done as many homes as possible in the shortest amount of time to be able to upload enough videos, like stuff like that. And for this house, I didn't feel rushed at all. It's not that I feel like that all the time. I'm not complaining um, at all because I really love building and creating content. That is just my passion. So I'm really enjoying it, but I'm just saying that sometimes I can feel a bit rushed when I'm doing that. Um, and it's not always, it's just sometimes. But for this house, for some reason, I was feeling so inspired. I was enjoying it so much that I built it all in one sitting. And granted, the house is not as cluttered as it would usually be if it was a regular residential home, um, but it is a rental. So like I said, it's not as cluttered. But still, I don't know, I've never built a house this size, cluttered or not cluttered, like in one sitting, which is crazy. And it might have something to do with the fact that I am in my new office. You can probably tell by uh, the little video background for my face cam. I know the face cam is very small, but you can definitely, if you've seen more of my videos, then uh, you might see that I'm in a different area in a different spot. Um, because me and my boyfriend, we made ourselves a new little office, which we are very excited about. It's not finished at all. Since we're talking about this, I might as well explain. Um, you can see that behind me, we have this little cabinet where I just put some random little knickknacks on top. Um, it's not finished. We're going to put a little shelf on top of it that you probably won't be able to see on camera. No, I think it's going to be a little bit too high up for you to actually see, but I will place some little um, trailing plants, like some little hanging plants off of it so that you can see those. And I think I might just put a little like plant in the corner here, something higher up to like fill up the space. It's probably going to be a fake plant because a real plant, well, it might as well, I could also try and do a real plant actually, because we have this, I have this door. You can't see that either, but I have a door right next to me. So we do have some nice natural light coming into this room. So I might try and place an actual plant in this corner but maybe i'm gonna be maybe i'm gonna do a fake one just to uh you know play it safe i don't know and then over here you can see that we have this little stool which is in a hideous wood stain color that is just really terrible however that stool is very near and dear to my heart because i've had it since Honestly, ever since I can remember, I've had it in my uh, my childhood bedroom and I've just for some reason always had this stool. It never really had any value to me before, like when I was a child, but for some reason I just never threw it out. I always found a new purpose for it or I just kept it. I don't really know, but it's been with me forever. So I really want to keep it now. Um, and I think I'm just going to sand it down and like paint it. I just don't know what color I might paint it white just to go with the furniture in the room. Um, but I also might paint it the same color as the wall, which is a nice icy, um, fresh, like blue color. I don't know. I'm just not sure. I could also do dark green because I have a really fun dark green paint color still laying around, which is very pretty. So I might do that. I don't know. Um, but I want to keep that stool right there because um, it looks like a fun spot for my cat to sit. So I might just put a little cushion on top of it and maybe she will sit there. I don't know though, because whenever I try and like create a little spot for my cat to sit or like try and make a nice little cozy corner or like place down a pet bed that I think she might enjoy, she will never lay there. If I created it, she will never, she will just not lay there. Um, so I don't know if she will, but I just want to try, like maybe put a little cushion on top because it just looks cozy. Um, otherwise she really enjoys, she's not right. She's not here right now, but she really enjoys sitting on the desk with me, like literally right next to me because it's a two, it's like a shared desk. I have my PC set up right here. And then my boyfriend's setup is like right next to me. Um, so ever since we have this little office and I'm sitting here, like working on things, my cat likes to join me. Um, and sit on the desk right next to me. So I just placed a little towel on the desk and she was laying there with me all morning. So that was really cute. So 
Um, yeah, long story short, I don't know if my cat will actually use this little stool to sit on, but I still want to try and like give it a chance because maybe, maybe she'll like it. She might, I don't know. Um, anyway, but that is that on um, the update for our new little office. I am also vlogging the process. However, I am terrible at vlogging. I've never done it before. I did shoot some footage. We also shot some like um, time-lapse footage of us like painting the room and like assembling furniture. So I might put that up. I just don't know. Um, I don't know if the video is going to be interesting enough or fun enough. I'm also just a little bit self-conscious about it because I'm just not a great vlogger. But let me know if you're interested in seeing that, even though it's not going to be the greatest vlog. Maybe you might enjoy seeing the little process and hearing me talking about it a little bit more. I don't know. It's not that big of like a house reno. It's just a very, very small room that we decided to turn into an office. Um, but you might be interested in that. So let me know if you are and I will put it up. Um, I think it's going to be quite fun. I haven't edited it or anything. But still, I feel like it's going to be, it's just a nice vlog for me to have personally to look back on. I don't know why. It's just, sometimes I'm just sentimental like that. Um, but yeah, let me know if you are interested in seeing that. And uh, I will edit it some more and put it on the channel. Maybe you'll enjoy it. But yeah, you can really see this house come together. I don't even know how I started off on this ramble. Um, it was, I think it was because I wanted to try and explain why... I was feeling so inspired to finish this house all in one sitting and I think it has something to do with the fact this was actually the first house build that I did in the new office and I was just enjoying it. I was in a good place. It was nice to sit here. It was a nice work environment if you will I guess. So I don't know I was feeling really inspired and I just didn't stop building until it was done. Obviously I took some breaks to like have lunch and stuff because it's a big house and it still took me a while to build it. But uh, yeah, still, I don't know. I was feeling very inspired and I built it all in one sitting, which is crazy. But you can see the interior come together. I really like what I did for the interior. It's very fresh. I used a lot of lighter colors, some cool toned colors, as well as some warm toned touches here and there to kind of warm up the place a little bit. But yeah, the interior is quite modern, but also it has some like bohemian touches here and there. I used some wicker furniture, um, like some wicker chairs around the table and some wicker chairs in the lounge area. So yeah, it feels a little bit boho and a little bit tropical in that sense because it is in Solani. So I felt like I might as well try and like capture that look and feel as well for the interior. So that's what I did. But for the rest, the house is very spacious. Um, I was gonna make it for eight Sims. However, I miscounted and I made it for nine Sims instead, which is not all that functional because you can only have eight Sims in your household. But I don't know, it kind of worked out because since it's a rental, you can go here with like any type of family. And we do have two um, bedrooms with a double bed in it. And those bedrooms are obviously meant for couples. So we have a master, quote unquote, master bedroom downstairs. That is a very nice and spacious bedroom with an ensuite as well as a very large walk-in closet as well. And then upstairs we have um, another bedroom with a double bed in it. That one is also meant for a couple that also has an ensuite. And then we have two shared bedrooms with single beds and then one single bedroom with a single bed in it. So yeah, that is nine places to sleep in total, which is not all that usable because like I said, you're not gonna have nine Sims in your household. However, if you are going on vacation, it might kind of work out because maybe you are going on vacation with a large group of eight Sims and maybe only two of those Sims are actually a couple, then it still works out with the whole like, bed situation because then just one lucky sim can have the room with the ensuite and the double bed upstairs and then you know there aren't any like awkward bedroom situations where you have to swap out the double bed for two single beds or something so it kind of works out in that way so yeah that is actually quite nice so yeah nine places to sleep total and uh yeah, it's very customizable in that sense as well. You can always delete some beds if you want to do that. Um, that is no big deal either. But I feel like this house is very nice and usable for vacation 
gameplay. Um, it's going to be a very expensive rental, I think, though. I haven't really checked the price because, like I said, I actually built it as a residential and I placed it on the gallery as a residential as well. So you are going to have to um, place it in your game and then make it a rental yourself if you want to use it as a rental. So I have no clue what the rental price will be, but it's probably going to be quite expensive given the fact that the house is so big and there are so many items in it. And I really try to make it more on the luxurious side of things as well. So I placed a hot tub. Um, we do have a very large um, swimming pool in the backyard as well. I really like how the backyard turn out. I feel like the backyard is so fun and kind of interesting. I placed a pool on a diagonal. I've never done that before, I don't think, but I just really like how it looked for this uh, for this specific backyard. It, it makes it look a little bit less um, manicured or something, I want to say. I don't know. It gives, it gives the house a bit more of a like playful look and feel, but it also makes it feel very luxurious in my opinion. And I don't know why. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's completely random, but I feel like the diagonal pool just really works well for the exterior for this house. Um, but yeah, for the backyard, it's quite nice and spacious. So we have the area with a pool and then we also have a nice back porch and then also an extended little like terrace area with a hot tub as well and a grill, obviously. And we also have a nice balcony upstairs because I don't know, I just thought of that a, a balcony upstairs for the back of the house would be perfect because this lot has a spectacular view over the ocean, like it's so beautiful. Solani is just, every time I load into this world, I'm just like in awe of how beautiful this world is. It's, it's just so incredibly beautiful. I can't get over it. I love building here. And the crazy thing is actually, I have never built on this lot before. If you're not recognizing the lot, I don't blame you. Um, I literally have never built here before. It's in the, uh, I want to say more downtown area. However, it's not really a town, so I don't really know what else to call it, though. It's, it's the area where um, where the, uh, the bar is located and where the beach lot is located by default. Um, so that little, well, I guess just downtown little area. And then there is one lot a little bit higher up on a hill, I want to say. And um, by default, there is just this townies, like a towny family, like a large house. I have no clue what they're called. I, I don't know the townies, especially not for this world. Um, So I have no clue what family it is, but it is like that family on on the uh, on the little hill in that area. It's, it's a larger lot, as you can tell by this build, but I have never built here before and I don't know why. Well, actually, I do know why. It's because it's a, is it a 40 by 30, I think? Yeah, I think it's a 40 by 30 lot. Those are quite big and I tend to go for smaller lots like 30 by 20s or 20 by 15 lots. Those are my absolute favorites. And 40 by 30, I'm always like a little bit intimidated by. So I try to avoid them if I can. Um, however, I really felt like building in Solani and building on this lot because I've never built here before. And also because the lighting on this lot is really pretty. It, it's really good for like taking screenshots and just building in general. So I don't know, I was just so inspired by this build. And since it is on a hill, you have this amazing view over the ocean and also over the little bay area where we have the cafe and like the beach and stuff. So it's just so cozy. It's such a nice spot. It's so like serene and peaceful and just so gorgeous. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm repeating myself a bunch, but I was just feeling so inspired <laughs> for this lot. Um, but uh, yeah, you could see the first bedroom come together. That is the, in my opinion, the master bedroom because it has an ensuite as well as a walk-in closet, whereas the uh, the shared double bed bedroom upstairs only has an ensuite and no like walk-in closet or anything. So that one is a little bit smaller. Um, but then for the bathroom situation, like I said, the two or the downstairs bedroom has an ensuite. Then we also have a powder room off of the entryway. Um, and then we also have another full bathroom slash laundry room off of the kitchen. I thought it would be fun and realistic to include laundry for this house because I don't know, for a large vacation, like a large family 
vacation house like this one, I feel like you might want to do laundry at some point. So I just included some laundry machines and then I turned the laundry room into a full bathroom as well. So there are two full bathrooms downstairs, which one of them is an ensuite. And then there is a half bathroom downstairs as well. And then upstairs for this bedroom that we're furnishing right now, we have an ensuite and then we have one more full hall bathroom upstairs, which is for the other bedrooms to share. Now that might be a little bit of an awkward situation because three bedrooms are going to have to share that one bathroom and two of those bedrooms are shared bedrooms. So that is five Sims total sharing one bathroom. However, I thought it would be fine because we do have two more toilets downstairs and like one more shower downstairs as well. So I feel like it works out, um, especially gameplay wise. You should be fine gameplay wise. Your Sims are probably going to end up using the en suites, even though they're not staying in those bedrooms. So I feel like it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I feel like there are enough bathrooms for this house. And then for the, uh, the single bed bedrooms upstairs or actually all of the bedrooms, I just was really trying to pay attention to the color scheme. I'm using different swatches of this plastery wallpaper that I'm using on the exterior of the build. I think I'm using the same swatch on the interior for like the main parts, like the, the kitchen and the living area in this house. And then for the bedrooms, I'm using the same wallpaper, but in different swatches. So I really tried to go off of those um, colors and try and make a cool like color scheme for each of the bedrooms. So for example, this one, this is the smallest little bedroom. It's also the only single bed, um, not shared bedroom, if you will. And for this one, I'm using that. I, I, I don't really know what to call this color. It's like, it's almost like a very light green color. You could, some people might call it yellow. I, I feel like it's more on the green side though. And I tried to combine that with, um, with gray for the bedding and stuff. And then this bedroom, this is a kid's bedroom. I used the more like the orangey wallpaper for this one and I combined it with the pink beds, which I think is such a beautiful combination. I love the pink and this swatch of orange together. It's so nice and playful and just still soft. And I just really think it's so pretty. So yeah, I really wanted to try and include some kids stuff for this house as well so that you can actually go on a family vacation and not have your kids be bored, even though they probably will be outside playing in the pool pretty much all day. Um, I still wanted there to be some toys. So for this bedroom, I included a couple of toys. We have a toy box and a Blarfie, and then that is basically it. So if you want to add some more toys, oh wait, no, I actually also included a um, a dollhouse on the balcony. So that is a nice toy for your Sims kids to enjoy as well, which is really nice. But yeah, this room is very orange and pink, as you can see, and definitely not as cluttered. And then this larger shared bedroom has the pink wallpaper. And then I combined it with the blue bedding, which I just thought was so beautiful. And then also, it also has a couple of touches of green here and there, which I always really, really like. I love pink and green together. I just think it's such a cool combination of colors. Um, so yeah, that's what I did in here as well. And like very matchy, matchy furniture everywhere in very matchy, um, very matching wood tones. So yeah, it's, it's a very stylized house, if you will. But because it is a rental, I feel like that makes sense. And then this bedroom I was thinking uh, could be for teens. I mean, it really doesn't matter. You could have kids sleep in this room or young adults for that matter, or just adults. It really doesn't matter. But I feel like since the other shared bedroom was meant for kids, I was thinking this one could be for teens. Um, so I was trying to create that vibe, like a teen's bedroom vibe a little bit. I also placed a, um, what's it called? A desk with a computer in here because I mean, it's a rental, but a computer is just very necessary for gameplay. So I figured I would include a, uh, a computer in this house. You could always have your Sims bring their laptops, um, if you want to do that. But I felt like placing a computer is just nice to, uh, I don't know, make the build feel a little bit more complete, I guess. But yeah, here you can see we have the um, the balcony and I don't know if you can see it, but I'm using um, medium wall height sliding doors on the first floor of the house, like on the ground floor. And they're clipping through here a little bit. Um, they're clipping through the balcony a little bit where I place like underneath the sliding doors that I'm using on the second floor. Those are just a regular uh, short wall height doors. Um, but yeah, they're, they are clipping through 
the floor, like the balcony floor a little bit. However, it's not causing any routing issues. I play tested it. You can barely even see it because I placed doors on top of it. So, I mean, there is a little bit of clipping there, but it's not, it's not, it wasn't bothering me at all. And it doesn't cause any routing issues either. So I felt like it was fine. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would mention that in case you saw some weird clipping and, uh, was wondering what it was. Well, that's what it is. And then for the backyard, you can see that I included a nice large eight seater dining table because we do have a couple dining tables indoors, but those are six seater tables. So if you're gonna stay here with a family of eight, it might be nice to have a, uh, a table for eight Sims. So I figured I would place it on the back porch because that's where I have the space for it. And your Sims are probably gonna be spending most of their time outside if they're staying here and the weather is nice. So yeah, I felt like they're probably gonna have dinner outside pretty much every day, or they're gonna go to a restaurant or what have you. But I just thought it was nice to include a large dining table outdoors. And then we have the rest of the necessities out here as well. We have some um, outdoor bins, we have a kiddie pool. I did not include any toddler stuff for this house, but I feel like you could easily swap out like a couple of normal size beds for toddler beds if you needed to. So. I didn't feel like it was necessary to actually include toddler stuff because it's so easy to add. Um, but I did include a little kiddie pool and then I also included a nice grill on the back porch and then a, uh, a hot tub for your Sims to enjoy, um, which I thought was nice and made it feel very, very luxurious. And then out here, as you can see, we have the pool, which is my favorite part of the backyard. And then I placed all these loungers around it from the uh, Wedding Stories pack. I love these loungers, they're so pretty. And then I also placed a couple yoga mats so your Sims can do some yoga, which I thought was really fitting for a vacation house like this. But then that is actually it for this build. So let's jump right into the game and I'll show you the house in real time. So here we have the house in the game. First of all, just let me show you the view. So this is that little bay area that I was talking about before. And then over here we have like the beach and the bar is over there. So it's in this little area. And then back here, I mean, look at this. Isn't this just stunning? You have this gorgeous view over the ocean and I just can't get enough of it. It's just so beautiful. I love Solani in case you didn't catch on to that fact. But yeah, here we have the facade of the house. Since we don't really have a pathway leading all the way up to the lot, which is very annoying. I don't know why it's like that, but it's like that for a lot of lots in this game. I just decided to place some sand around the lot and I feel like it looks cool, but it would have been nice to have like a pathway connecting the lot to this like sandy pathway over here. But alas, we don't, so this works too. So over here, I placed a little swing set and then we have a porch leading into the backyard. And then on the other side, you can walk around this side as well. So you uh, walk straight up to the pool, which is over here. We have a nice diving board and then some loungers around the pool as well. I also parked a couple of bikes here. They probably come with the rental is what I was thinking so that your Sims can just grab a bike and uh, I don't know, explore the area a little bit. I thought that that would be cute. I also placed a couple of yoga mats around, one right here and one right here. And then over here we have the uh, the back porch. So we have a grill and a large dining table, a little couch. And then over here we have a full on lounge area and a hot tub and a little picnic table as well. So yeah, there are lots of activities and just a lot of room for your Sims to hang out out here. But then when we go inside, obviously over here we have the nice front porch and then we have the front door leading you right into the lounge slash dining area. We have a couple dining areas in this house actually. So we don't have a full on closed off entryway, but I feel like this house didn't really need that. So we have this large open space with a dining table, as you can see, and a nice little shelving unit. And then over here, we have the actual lounging area with some couches. I made sure to place a lot of plants around because that was just, it just felt very fitting for this house. So it's open and airy and light. We also have a functional bookcase over here, which is nice, and a TV and a fireplace, which you are probably never gonna use in Solani, but I still felt like it looked fun. Then through this quote unquote archway, it's just pillars with a spandrel in between. You enter into the kitchen and another dining area as well. And then in this corner over here, I placed a little bar because I just thought it was fitting for a rental. So we have this nice open kitchen. It's not as cluttered, but it is definitely still lived in. We have an ice 
ice cream maker. I never use the ice cream maker, but it's a rental in Solani. So I felt like, you know what? These Sims deserve some ice cream. So I place an ice cream maker and then just the rest of the necessities for a kitchen. We have a fridge and a sink and a little bar over here. And then off of the kitchen, we have a laundry slash bathroom, which I thought was very nice. So this is just a hall bath with a shower tub combo, some laundry machines and a sink and a toilet over here. And then through this archway, we have a little hallway. So the hallway is nothing special. I just placed a shelving unit in here, a mirror and, you know, just some decorations. And then obviously we have the staircase, but off of this little hallway, we have the quote unquote master bedroom. I feel like this is the actual master bedroom. So we have a nice double bed. It's very soft color scheme wise. I really love it. It feels very romantic to me. We have a little chair where you can just throw your clothes. And then we have a full on walk-in closet. And then over here they have their ensuite. They just have a shower in here, no tub, but I just really felt how open and spacious it was. So I just really didn't want to add a tub because that would make it feel a little bit too cramped. And I would rather have a nice luxurious double sink situation than a tub. So that's what I chose to do instead. Then when we go upstairs, we have the landing. The landing is nothing special. I just thought I would add an additional bookcase as a fun activity for your sink. And then, I don't know, it's just very empty, but it makes sense. We do have a nice large rug in here though, to fill up the space a little bit. And then over here, we have another double bed bedroom. It's very basic, not as cluttered, but it feels very luxurious to me. So yeah, we have their bed over here. They have a dresser over here in the corner or a wardrobe, I should say. This little sitting area over here with some suitcases. I also placed a hamper in here because we do have laundry. So I placed a couple hampers throughout the build, not necessarily for every single bedroom, but there definitely are more than enough hampers. And then they have their ensuite through here as well. Not as luxurious as the one downstairs, but still very nice. Then over here, we have the kids bedroom. This one is more on the colorful side, as you can see. And we have a couple of toys in here. It's very matchy matchy, and it feels very appropriate for kids. In my opinion, we have this little corner with a mirror and some cushions and some nice decorations in here. But yeah, as you can see, it's definitely not as cluttered as I would normally make my kids' bedrooms. Then across from the kids' bedroom, we have this smaller single bedroom. This one has a light green and gray color scheme, very matching furniture in here, which I just really like. So they have their dresser with a nice mirror and then also a hamper in here and just a little seating area over here that you wouldn't probably really sit, but just throw your clothes or your suitcase or what have you. And then they do have a sliding door onto the balcony. So even though this bedroom is a little bit smaller, they do have access to the balcony. So that is nice. And then over here on this side, we have the quote unquote teens bedroom. It's not necessarily for teens, but it's still what it feels like to me. So yeah, this has a very pink and blue and a little bit of green color scheme. Again, matching furniture, which makes it very rental like in my opinion. We also have a desk with a computer and just some regular knickknacks. I really enjoyed this splash of color on the wall right here. I love these paintings. They're so cute. A mirror over here in the corner. And then they also have a sliding door that leads on to the balcony. So over here on the balcony, we just have an easel because it was a nice skill building item for your Sims to use. And then we also have a dollhouse out here for the kids to play with. And then over here in this little corner, we have the hall bathroom. So this one is very small, but definitely functional. But yeah, that is actually it for this house. So this luxury family rental is up on the gallery. It's on the gallery as a residential lot though. So if you want to make it a rental, just place it in your game, load into it in build mode, and then change the lot type to rental. And then you should be fine. The residential lot comes in at just under 142,000 simoleons. So that is quite expensive. It does have five bedrooms and five bathrooms, and I built it on a 40 by 30 in Solani. So if you want to place it in your game, that's where it goes. But that is actually it for this build. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. You can obviously go ahead and download this build off the gallery if you want to. My username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you want to be notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!